Hello, dear students. In the previous lecture of P block elements, we have done our oxygen family. In oxygen family, physical and chemical properties we have already completed. Okay. Now today we will study about the compounds of some importance. Okay. About every compounds, I have told you three things you have to do: is what its preparation, its properties, and its uses. These three things about every compound. So in oxygen family we have to study about the compounds of oxygen and uh, sulfur. These are the two important elements whose compounds we will discuss particularly. So let's start with the oxygen. And oxygen first one is the very familiar dioxygen. Okay. Now how to prepare the dioxus uh, dioxygen? So in laboratory, if you go for, we need the pure form. So at that time, chlor salts like chlorates, nitrates have access particularly oxides, which easily get decomposed. Like for example, if we take chlorate salt, any, and we will heat it particularly in presence of some catalyst, they will easily get decomposed to liberate the oxygen. Okay. So this is the one of the methods. You can also do the thermal decomposition of uh, some non-reactive elements like mercuric oxides, silver oxides. They will also get thermally decomposed easily, liberating the oxygen particle. Hydrogen peroxides also easily get decomposed in, in leaving the water behind as in the form of oxygen. So these are the different methods of preparation. If you go for the production, mean to say on large scale if you want, that we will do by the liquefaction of atmosphere air, atmospheric air. You know that from air easily you can uh, liquefy the air. After the carbon dioxide separation, yeah. oxygen is the next one which is going to get liquefied from the air. So, on the large scale, if we needed the oxygen, we did that all by the using the liquefaction of air particle. In the pure form, if we needed, we will decompose either of any of these methods we can use particularly. So, this one is the preparation method for your oxygen. Now, let's talk about the properties. So, if you to go for the physical property, you have to tell that a it is colorless gas. First property is it is colorless, odorless. Okay. And its solubility, if you talk about that is the good one. The solubility is 3.08 centimeter cube in 100 centimeter cube water. This is quite a good solubility. You will call it good soluble in water. And that will thus help in sustaining. Marine or you can say aquatic life. So aquatic life is possible only if the oxygen is dissolved in that and oxygen have its solubility quite good in the particularly water. So that's become the reason for the sustainability of the aquatic life there. And if you go for the allotropes particularly or mean to say mechanical properties, you can explain that oxygen have three kind of isotopes, 17, 18, three isotopes of oxygens are possible. Okay, now reaction of anything with the oxygen is highly exotherm. You know that mostly things in the nature exist in the oxide form. Why? Because oxygen is quite reactive. You need to apply the energy just to initiate the reaction particle. Like if you are going with calcium oxide, it will readily get converted into calcium oxide. Just you have to supply the energy in the starting. In the starting, you have to apply 48, 4 kilojoule per mole. That is the bond association enthalpy for oxygen. You have to apply just only once. After that, 
the reaction will proceed itself. Mostly metals can react easily with the, the calcium, carbon easily get converted into its oxides. This is metal one, this is the non-metal one. Few are which needed the catalyst as well. Like sulfur oxide, if you could react with to convert sulfur to oxides, you need catalyst like vanadium oxides. This is an important reaction, particularly you will came across this reaction a lot of time further also. Okay. That sulfur dioxide, how that we convert into sulfur trioxide by using the catalyst vanadium oxide. So to convert elements into their oxides, few are readily get converted, few needed some catalyst presence particularly there. Okay. Now these are the chemical property you need to tell about the oxygen. Now if you go for the uses, you know that in spite of respiration, okay, it is also used in the case of the fuels, welding purposes, also oxygen gas cylinders we are used in medical also operations during <coughs> the oxygen cylinders are particularly used. So these are the different uses of the oxygen gas there. Okay. Now this is all about the dioxygen that how we will prepare it, how will we produce it, what are its physical property, what are its chemical property and what is its usage particularly. Now the next compound is your simple oxides. This particularly thing you have done a lot of time K. That a binary compounds. Binary compound means to say any other element, any element, like I am supposing E is the element, any element from the periodic table, and whatever the compound it made it with the oxygen, that is termed as its oxides. So, if uh, you talk about the oxides, simple oxides of all the elements, four kinds of oxides are possible. If you react any metal with oxygen and the metal oxide that form, that will be always basic in nature, basic in nature. Like if you go for the calcium, oxygen it will form calcium oxide, this will be basic. How will you prove that it is basic? When you put it into water, it will result in the formation of a alkali or your base. So. The first thing is you must know that metal oxide are basic in nature. Now if you are taking any non-metal particularly, non-metal usually react with the oxygen to give you non-metal oxides, but the nature is becomes acidic this time. So non-metal oxides are acidic. This when also you can show like sulfur dioxide is a non-metallic oxide when you put that into water it will form legend in the formation of sulfurous acid particularly. So non-metal oxides are showing acidic behavior. Now the another thing, some metalloids which are showing like aluminium particularly when react with oxygen, it will form the Al2O3 aluminium oxides and this Al2O3 is capable to react with acid as well as with the base. Mean to say with acid as well as with the base, this oxide is possible to react. So it will result in the formation of AlCl3 and release particularly or this salt will form and water. Mean to say neutralization reaction is forming where Al2O3 is behaving as a base. But in this case, you will see that it will form sodium aluminate plus water will get released. So this is your salt. But in this case, it neutralizing the base, meaning behaving acid. So, an oxides behaving acid as well as base. So, such oxides are termed as amphoteric oxides. So, the third one oxides possible with the elements is the amphoteric oxides. Now, the last one is neutral oxides. So mean to say some elements are forming in some condition the neutral oxide. Example are carbon monoxides. Okay. 
dinitrogen oxides particularly and nitric oxides also these are the particularly two or three examples of neutral oxides mean to say these elements are forming the neutral oxides here and so if i summarize them again four kinds of simple oxides are possible basic acidic amphoteric and neutral oxides okay so two compounds of uh, oxygen today we have discussed one is dioxide and other one is the its oxides one more is remaining that we will do in the next lecture so today you will first thing you will do read the topic second cues and answer are given on uh, page number 185 and 183 that you have to solve in rough notebook third thing make your notes make notes in fair notebook so three things is your homework today first one you have to read the topic completely taking question answers on page number 183 185 that you have to solve in rough notebook and make your notes in fair notebook here thank you